What's going on everyone? I am here with my former teacher and a former drum teacher right here, John Lamatina. This man's a retired school teacher of 50 years, and I'll tell you what, pro drummer right here. This man, <laughs> welcome. Oh my gosh, I love this. And we are here on location at his house. <laughs> That's great to see everyone, <laughs> and great to see Stephen again. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, your fifth grade, God, God, man, early nineties. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. So tell everyone about like your influences, you know, with drumming and stuff. You know. Wow, that's that's a, a good question. Actually, the reason why I started playing drums was because of a group called the Beatles. You may may have heard of them at one time mm -hmm. or another. And when the Beatles were out, everybody wanted to play. So. My mother bought me a guitar, I think it was $18, it was a silver tone guitar, and after three days, I gave the guitar to my brother, and I bought some drumsticks, mm -hmm. and I've been drumming ever since, and he's been playing guitar ever since. As a matter of fact, my brother and I have played in different bands and uh, together for, for many years. So, the Beatles were my first influence as far as playing goes, but mm -hmm. it's just so many great drummers. I had... Uh, my two early teachers, I started with a guy named Bob Brown, who no one would know of, but he was very good. And then I studied with a Long Island legend. His name was Al Miller. And as a matter of fact, I still teach out of Al's books to, for my students. And then on Long Island, I also studied with Dom Famularo, and I, I'm back to studying with Dom because I'm, uh, since I've been retired, I wanted to take lessons again. And Dom is a world-renowned uh, drummer and, and teacher and clinician, and he's traveled the world uh, playing drums. So those are the, the people that started me teaching-wise, mm -hmm. but who am I influenced by? Everybody that plays. There's, so, <laughs> there's so many great players. There's so many great players now that yeah. people say, well, they don't make them the way they used to. They, right. they sure make them pretty good today. So oh, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of really great Young drummers, now for young for me is anybody under 50. <laughs> I don't trust anybody that's over 50 years, under 50 years old. So, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there's so many, so many great players and so many great genres of music. So, right. And I started like everybody else did in a garage band, and mm -hmm. we, we thought we were terrific. We practiced two nights a week, and we <laughs> we played early gigs, and, and it was a good way to break in. And then I right. started playing with older guys in New York, and mm -hmm. and that was great because I was the young guy then, and mm -hmm. and they they taught you the ropes, you mm -hmm. know, they taught you what you were supposed to do as a player and as a member of the band, and so on. So mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that was. Uh, that was the way I was brought up and then played with so many different groups through through the years. I, I had one group on Long Island that I played with for 13 years and we we were a, a quote wedding band in a, uh, uh, a, a small catering house and we would do 150 jobs a year, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Christmas parties and bar mitzvahs and all of those things, mm -hmm. everything you see on the bed movies, but uh, uh, but the, the group was a, a great group. I uh, enjoyed playing with them. And then when I moved to Atlanta, it was a whole new set of musicians. And there was one guy in particular that I worked with for almost 30 years. He just passed away a couple of years ago. His name mm -hmm. is Johnny Knapp, and uh -huh. we worked together hundreds or thousands of jobs mm -hmm. and um he was a jazz great in new york growing up he played with with all the guys in new york so all of that uh, to to make make it a short nutshell got you way where you were mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. you just listen mm -hmm. you just listen you listen to everybody mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. listen to different groups and that's what i do as a teacher i i want to hear what the kids are listening to today you know right, right. the black keys or right, uh, right. Uh, the Foo Fighters or, uh, right. you know, whichever groups are uh, that they are listening to. And, and most of today's players are yeah. really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, uh, I guess the competition is stronger, so you're not going to make it there unless you're really good. When yeah, I first exactly. broke in in the 60s, mm -hmm. <laughs> there were more jobs than players. So <laughs> you would give a, a guy a call on Tuesday if you didn't have a gig and, and yeah, he had yeah. something for you. It might not have been a great gig, but you got out. And, right, right. And played so, mm -hmm. so uh, that's a one of my shorter answers. I like it. I like it. I like it. And I tell you what, man. I, when I was in a class, I clearly remember back then in fifth grade, early nineties. I clearly remember. Uh, 
I was obsessed. <laughs> I was obsessed with the. Uh, I think the Safaris did it. Wipeout. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that was I was obsessed song. with that. Just Tom yeah. Tom. You know. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I always used to say, Wipeout does not a drummer make. <laughs> but it, it was very recognizable. Yeah. You know, now if you listen to Gene Krupa do Sing, 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 it probably if he hadn't done that, mm -hmm. drummers wouldn't have gotten to be with the position that they're in now. Mm -hmm. So he was the first, and then there was Buddy Rich. I got to meet Buddy a couple times. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it was. Wow, it was. Yes. It, it was funny. I. I, my Al Miller, who I was telling you about, the first time I met him, it was at a small venue on Long Island, mm -hmm. and on the break, he, he introduced Buddy Rich to me like I didn't know. He said, John, <laughs> this is Buddy Rich, and uh, I can talk anybody down, and I was tongue-tied. Mm -hmm. My wife spoke more with him than, than <laughs> I did. But then the next time I saw him, he was playing an outdoor concert, and it was before the concert. Mm -hmm. And Buddy was talking to all the drummers. It was great. It mm -hmm. was great. And he was, I had my little son was three years old in my arms, and he was actually playing drums at three, my son Joe. And uh, we got to see Buddy there. And I saw him live probably seven, eight times. So Nice. And Buddy's... But he's more than a legend. He's yeah. just one. What is it on uh, Dumb and Dumber? One in a million. <laughs> but that's <laughs> more like one out of a million. Yeah. Right. So you're saying right. there's a chance, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, but Buddy was amazing. But uh, there's been so many great players through the years. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you had mentioned uh, we were talking earlier with uh, Bonham and somehow you you know Bonham you know, is yeah. at the time was really I think the best technician. Mm -hmm. They were the hardest group going then. Of course, now they're just a rock group, you right. know? Right, right. But he yeah. did things that nobody else did. You know, the right. bottom triplets. Right. You know, nobody did that. Right. You know, he, right. he was so innovative and did things that, that none of us did. And they were they were great to listen to. Like Jimi Hendrix, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, mm -hmm. these, these guys, uh, unfortunately, in both cases, they were short-lived. But, uh, yep. uh, yep, but yep. Ringo did great things with the Beatles. And there were uh, so many... It, the 60s had so many innovative groups. You know, the, I think what the 60s had was volume because mm -hmm. music was the only thing in town. Mm -hmm. You know, now on a Saturday night, you can watch Netflix. Right. Uh, you can watch uh, football games. You know, everything is so mass media now mm -hmm. that, uh, that, you, that you have too many things to... Mm -hmm. uh, too many choices mm -hmm. you know when we were musicians like when i was playing in the 70s if you didn't have a gig yeah you went to a dinner club where there was a, a trio you know there was music mm -hmm. everywhere and and mm -hmm. and now there just is not as much but that's life you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. electronics and djs and so on have have changed the musician's life oh yeah yeah you know Absolutely. in the in the as i was growing up if i wanted to because i was a school teacher as you were just saying mm -hmm. uh but if you wanted to play, like uh, I had friends that did like the uh, the Holiday Inn circuit. So there were like on Long Island, there might have been 10 Holiday Inns. Mm -hmm. And they each had uh, a trio or quartet that played five or six nights a week. Mm -hmm. So like you would play in, in one town for a month and then you'd pick up your gear and play another Holiday Inn somewhere else. And mm -hmm. then you would teach your instrument during the day and maybe play like I did weddings on weekends and so on and you could make a living. But mm -hmm. now you're sort of a, a garage band or a rock star. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's not as much in between, you know. So right. even when I first moved to Atlanta, my early days, I was doing hundreds of jobs each year. I did a church gig on Sunday. You know, I played with two or three different groups and I was I was working a lot. Now, most guys, if you do... 50 to 70 jobs a year, you're really, you're really happy. So that's, yeah. that's how it's changed. You know, mm -hmm. some guys might have a, a steady gig at a, a, you know, like a Buckhead restaurant or something like that. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's high quality players and there's not as many high quality jobs right now. No, I hear you. I hear mm -hmm. you. I hear you. And you, well, you had mentioned the seventies. Uh, I love Kansas. You, yeah, you, about, you, know, sure. you, you know Phil, the drummer. Yeah. And I think he's a great drummer. But, you know. Oh, there's, yeah. there's, each decade had so many different uh, things that worked so well. Night yeah. Fever was such a great album. It was the drumming wasn't tremendous. It was 
perfect. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it was perfect. You know, it wasn't so technical, but what they did was, was perfect. So mm -hmm. that's what I tell the students. You know, people generally don't come to just see the drummer. They come to hear the band. Right. And if you're in the band, you have to play the music. You have mm -hmm. to play the music. So, mm -hmm. so Bonham was able to play so much with Zeppelin because mm -hmm. there were... There were three instrumentalists, and, and they were all monster players, mm -hmm. so they all helped one another out. That's not the, that's the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've played drum solos on gigs, but mostly you don't, you know, right, because right. you're playing to uh, a crowd in, in, in a certain way that you, right. know, you might get some breaks and do some stuff, but right, generally right. they're not coming to hear you play drum solos. Right, exactly, exactly. No, I hear you completely, yeah. And I mean, I know I was talking with you earlier. I mean, Sabian, man. <laughs> oh, good stuff right there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky enough to be, I got a, a Sabian endorsement in 1994. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them ever since. So, uh, and they're a great, great company. They're a family-based company. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really treat their people well. So mm -hmm. uh, I've enjoyed Sabian. Uh, Promark Drum Six, Evan Drum, Evan's Drum Heads. Uh -huh. Back in the day, I was endorsed by Tama, but now mostly the 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 big companies really only endorse the stars. You know I what I mean? You. And they don't make the money, believe it or not, that you do selling drumsticks. Oh, I hear you. You know, I hear you. <laughs> you go hear through you. you go through fifty or sixty pairs of drumsticks a year, but you you don't go through a fifty uh -huh. pairs of fifty drum sets. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you on that. Now. Yeah, I hear. You. Uh, so, okay, you... Tell me one with the Air Force. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. in the... Uh, uh, when I was eligible for the draft, mm -hmm. which we don't have now, of course, mm -hmm. um, this was Vietnam times, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, and I was lucky enough because I played drums mm -hmm. to get into the Air Force band. It was actually the Air National Guard. Great players. Mm -hmm. Really great players. So I did my... Uh, active duty in Virginia, and then I was with the Air Force Band in New York, where you uh, you went uh, once a month on a weekend. We actually went two Saturdays a month, and, mm -hmm. and then we played all sorts of jobs, because everybody wanted to hear the Air Force Band, and there was, mm -hmm. if there was a colonel in, uh, in New Jersey that wanted you, you hopped on a plane <laughs> and you played, and again, I, a lot of guys that I worked with on the outside, I was in the in the National Guard band with them in the Air Force. It was a great experience, and I was lucky uh -huh. because a lot of guys my age mm -hmm. wound up in the infantry and uh, didn't come back. As a right. matter of fact, I was at my 50th high school reunion. I was five when I graduated, so I was younger than most everybody else. But uh, uh, unfortunately, there were like seven or eight guys in my graduating class that died Oh. In Vietnam, yeah. So yeah. it was a tough time. Yeah, it was yeah, a tough yeah. time for that. Mm -hmm. But playing in the in the Air Force band was was turned out to be a great experience. As a matter of fact, the uh, commander used to use me on outside gigs. It was I played at Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. yeah I played. Yeah. I played for the they this uh, there's an event called the Gold Golden Gloves uh -huh. and. Uh, they had three tr three trumpet players and two drummers, and we did <laughs> ruffles and flourishes between boxing matches. That was <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And I actually <laughs> played with him in the uh, the Union Band in New York uh, in the park in Lincoln Center. It's called Damrush Park, and we did that job every year for seven eight years. It was it was nice. So I've been lucky. I've I've played some gigs. I played the. I played for the Olympics in 96. I did the opening ceremonies. Oh, here. that's right. Yeah. yeah, I did that. I do, yeah, yeah. I played uh, for the Georgia Emmys one year. Wow. So I've gotten, somehow I've been lucky enough to do some big gigs aside from playing uh, for like 40 seniors at a, <laughs> at a senior center. <laughs> I hear you. Some of them couldn't walk and most of them couldn't hear, but they I were there, there for us. We were there to play music for them too. I hear so, you. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. I, that, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, because well, obviously you're, you were a teacher. I mean, you know, I, I, this is going to sound really random, but <laughs> mm. I, I, I clearly remember you specifically. I don't know what you call them. This is so random. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, the caramel cookie bars from Little Debbie. 
I clearly remember that. You oh, really? That. Yeah, I never tried them before. Ah, you remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, I, are you talking about the, 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 little, the peanut butter ones? Uh, <laughs> it has caramel in it. It's kind of like a Twix. You remember, it's like Little Debbie, though. I don't remember that, but I know my kids <laughs> loved Little Debbie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I used to give out prizes to the kids in the class. Yeah, uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I used to give out something called Llama Bucks. So uh -huh. if, you got, if you did well, you got so many Llama Bucks and you can turn them in for something. I do remember and, that, yeah. And then one one year, uh, uh, one of the one of the young men was taking lessons from me here, uh -huh. and his father was a police officer and had a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, was going to pay me for the lessons with llama bucks, <laughs> so I said they're out of circulation. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But we had good times. I love teaching it. I love teaching the, yeah. the the kids. I still do. So yeah. In fact, I. I have uh, 30 some odd students and I have, I'm teaching my granddaughter who's six years old. She's in Los Angeles. I'm teaching another six year old girl. Mm -hmm. And then I have some 60 year old women and men that I'm teaching to. And, I like it. And all, all points in between. So yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. I, I really like being with the little kids and I've enjoyed that through the years. And some of them get the jokes and most of them don't. So I can just <laughs> repeat them over and over again. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. My favorite is, you know what a tree is in Brooklyn? Do you know what a tree is in Brooklyn? Uh -huh. It's the number after two. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Right, right. right. That's, that's what a tree is in Brooklyn. I like it. <laughs> Well, you got the shirt on, obviously, North. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, I, yeah, there's so much stuff I remember back then. But, um, I mean, Clint, well, Paul Hedges, I mean, you know, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Paul taught with me over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Paul, I believe, is the music minister now at one of the local churches and and uh, has made a living with music. I've had mm -hmm. so many of my students, yourself included, that mm -hmm. have gone on to um, uh do careers in music, uh, which is great. As a matter of fact, I did a Zoom about a month ago with mm -hmm. uh, three of my former students, mm -hmm. plus my two sons, who were both my students. So there were five of us, and we did a Zoom, and they were all uh, at Brookwood in the late late 90s and early 2000s, and, and they taught for me over here as well, and it was great. One of them was in Australia. One was here. Mm -hmm. uh, my son's in Ohio. My other son's in uh, Los Angeles, and one was in Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, in Columbia, Missouri. So we we did a Zoom. I wanted them to tell me some things to help, but we we were talking too much about old times that now yeah. <laughs> now we're going to have to do it again and, and uh -huh. learn because you can learn from everybody. Oh yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, back in the day. I used to play on Long Island. They they were called catering houses, and there were like ten rooms. So there were like ten brides, all uh -huh. all sorts of white dresses all over the place and chandeliers. Uh -huh. But when you were on a break, you went to uh, hear the other bands, mm -hmm. and there was some some really great bands. As a matter of fact, a lot of them were like recording musicians in in New York City that would would play a wedding gig. You got paid well. It got fed well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, if you went uh, on these jobs and your your uh, uh, cocktail hour wasn't that good, you had a tuxedo on, so you went to another room and you ate that that cocktail hour. That had a food. So, uh, but uh, and we got to know so many different musicians that way too. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, Atlanta's got some really top top musicians. Oh yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, the uh, the percussion teachers at all of the like the state colleges, Georgia State, Columbus State, uh, uh, Kennesaw, of mm -hmm. course, Georgia, Georgia Tech, they're mm -hmm. all top notch mm -hmm. guys, yep. top notch guys. And and the programs are great. So mm -hmm. uh, so uh, whether they're doing classical music or jazz or, or right. rock and roll, you know, and there's right. what is the one uh, uh, the Atlanta. There's a, a school for musicians, and it's it's not a degreed school. Uh, uh, is it Atlanta AIM Atlanta Institute oh, of Music? I is gotcha. that it? Yeah, I think so. I got gotcha. you. Where they, you know, and there's there's lots of good guys there, and and mm -hmm. there's lots of good teachers who teach either in the studio like I do, or mm -hmm. at some of the stores and so on. So, mm -hmm. 
So it's been going on for years. I've been teaching mm -hmm. since I was 19. So uh, I love it. <laughs> I, I actually, my my teacher got a gig that was six nights a week, and he gave me all his students. So when I was in my second year of college, I had 50 some odd drum students. Wow! Yeah. So uh, at a little little music studio on Long Island, and uh -huh. that was good times. Good I times. love it. I love it. I mean, and, and obviously we're sitting here. I mean, I clearly remember this, and you know, <laughs> fifth grade, and I love it. Yeah, right. I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. I, I remember back then. I, I okay. I cannot remember. God, I cannot remember the Beatles song. It was. It was uh, let's see. It was like. I'm trying to remember the melody. Dun 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. And, uh, well, I can't remember the song that, uh, but I remember Jamal. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We did I, I remember, so many. Yeah. <laughs> we did so many uh, birthday yeah. and uh, uh, maybe thinking of paperback. Not paper. Is it paperback writer? Uh, I'm trying to remember. The, I know the beat was just yeah. There. Oh, da 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 I don't know what song that is, but we can do it though. I mean, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you're talking about top notch drummers. This man right here is a top notch drummer. Oh, I don't know. There's lots, there's lots. But I can hold my own, I guess, you know, and have have worked with uh with different guys. I used to actually uh on a few occasions at Norton uh -huh. I was able to bring in a jazz trio to play for the kids. And one time we uh they had a, a big budget. This was uh PTA mm -hmm. and I got all first call musicians from Atlanta to come in and, and play the gig with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we had like a a mini big band mm -hmm. and um so uh of course they were off I think we did it on a Tuesday afternoon. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they all came in and the PTA paid them and uh that was a nice gig too. Nice, so, uh, nice. Yeah. So I was just as a matter of fact I sent a uh a birthday wish to a, a lady that I worked with, uh, with some quartets with really good players out on Reynolds Plantation out uh, in Lake Alcone at the um, Ritz Carlton out there. So mm -hmm. lots of different players. I worked with a big band, the Atlanta Blue Notes. I was with them for close to 30 years. I, I think they're still together, but, mm -hmm. you know, no one was together during the pandemic. But mm -hmm. um and we played many, many a job. And, mm -hmm. and he had a small band, like a Dixieland band, mm -hmm. um, the leader who just passed away a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm in a stage in my life where I'm losing people, you know, and I mean, uh, where, you know, guys that you knew for years. I got But you. that's life. I, you know? I hear you. I hear that's you. life. I hear you. But I'll tell you what, I, like, I, like I, that's what I tell people. I told JC that and, and other people. With you and Norton, like, truly, though, I, like, I personally... Honest to God, I've actually never seen that before. And what I mean by that is, like, basically Norton, how I look at that in my head is they conformed around you as far as with the drum program. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I've, 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 to this day, I've never seen something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, they conform to you. You're, you're an amazing drummer. They went around you. You see yeah. what I'm saying? I've never seen something like, you Well, know. we did, we did the drum show each year and we did the play each year. Uh -huh. So, uh, towards the end, uh, myself and another teacher, Miss Miller, mm -hmm. uh, directed the, the play and then we did the drum show. And mm -hmm. you were at my last drum show mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I think we had done it for like 26 years or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, we invited uh, different students. Paul was one of them uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that had been in the show. And that was that mm -hmm. was quite a quite a deal. We were even interviewed on a local uh, TV station about, oh, sure. about the last, yeah, the yeah. last show. So and that, Absolutely. I had everybody get in the line to come up and tell me what song they played in the, in the show. We did. Mm -hmm. I had... Anywhere from 30 to 80 students per year uh, take part in a drum show. And we yeah. had, we had like, uh, on a stage at one time, 20-something students, and we would rotate it and, and play songs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those students are, are playing. As a matter of fact, Lance, who was there that night, is mm -hmm. the band director at uh, Parkview High School now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he traveled... Uh, with a group called Blast all over the world playing drums. He went to UGA and uh, he's a, a monster player. So mm -hmm. a lot of the kids that we taught there are, are still playing. I get yeah. uh, I get different. Uh, it seems like somebody comes out of the woodwork every <laughs> week. Yeah, I took lessons in your studio yeah, and yeah. so on and so forth, which is nice, which is nice. you know. But even if they didn't, if you've ever played a musical instrument, drums or anything else, yeah. you listen differently. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you go to, uh, let's say you go to a concert, mm -hmm. you just hear things differently because you were part of music. It's, mm -hmm. uh -huh. it's like a, our own little fraternity or sorority uh -huh. where we just, uh, we, we know what's going on a little bit more. Right. Just like an athlete. You yeah. know what I mean? If you exactly. played college basketball and you never made the pros or whatever, but right. you go see a game, right. you think of all the work that you did to play what you, you did and so on. And that's how musicians are. And it's, mm -hmm. yep. it's sort of a special thing, you know, mm -hmm. and people, no matter what you do, if you're, you're decent with it and you have the passion for it, well, then it's, it's always there. That's you exactly know what right. I mean? So like, yep. uh, when I get in my car, I, I have one drumstick because I, I can't, I can't, can't drive with two drumsticks. I just, uh, I was just in touch with a guy in my fantasy baseball league, and we started talking drummers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I said, "Do you play?" He says, uh -huh. "On my steering wheel." I said, "I do some of my best drumming on my steering wheel, not when my wife's in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't want any part yeah. of that. Uh, but you know, especially now with Apple Music, you can hear anybody or, or yep. uh, Spotify." You can hear any era of any player. It's great. Yeah. It's great. I mean, uh, <laughs> I used to, I had a, I had a great, uh, I thought I had a great recording uh, for, you know, uh, when people call and you weren't there. My kids said it was too long, but my, my closing statement was if, if there's no music in the room, it ain't right. Uh, so, I like it. I and everybody, it. do you know anybody that doesn't like music? That's you true. Know? There are many. Yeah, no. yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's universal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. At churches, mm -hmm. uh, in the military. Mm -hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, when I was in the military, they were the band was revered because of all of the different ceremonies that they played, uh, funerals. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, of uh, uh, particularly like uh, lifetime uh, military people. You know, and. Um, when I was in the, the National Guard in New York, we played the National Guard convention every year. It was mm -hmm. upstate New York. And the, we did the concert band in the morning. And then he had a combo, which I played drums at night. You mm -hmm. know, it was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was great. And it's, you know, it's a privilege to play. Yeah. I, I hate musicians that go on a gig. Right, I right. I don't want to say hate. Right, right. But uh, they're looking at their watch 10 minutes. Right, into the game. right, right. Exactly. Go home. Let yeah. somebody who wants to play, play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. We can yeah. get tired, but, yeah. you know, on, on Saturday night, I wouldn't, I want to play drums. You That's know right. what I mean? Yeah. Where most people want to go out and listen to people play drums, we're happy playing. Most musicians, mm -hmm. that's what they live for. They live, live mm -hmm. to play. And, and you, uh, talk to doctors. Mm -hmm. They, they talk shop all the time and they realize the importance of their job and how they are saving lives and, mm -hmm. and making things good for people. And, mm -hmm. and you, you know, you get into these fraternities. As a school teacher, we were the same way. We would plan together and steal ideas from one another because we wanted to make things better for the kids. Oh, sure. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was a, an important thing. So I've been lucky. There was somebody asked Buddy Rich one time, uh, how do you like your job? He says, well, I don't have a job. I play. Uh, see, I love that. That's yeah. a buddy, that's a buddy that. line. But, you know, <laughs> you're doing what you love. If you're yeah. an EMT and you're really helping people out, yeah. it's it's different than when I used to make French fries on my first job, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, which was a good job. But, but, <laughs> I hear you. That makes yes. people happy, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it did. <laughs> I like French, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. A good parent, as they say in Brooklyn. A good parent. <laughs> well, you mentioned New York. How's the pizza? I've, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I remember that uh, about uh, one year into uh, living over here, I would talk to my grandmother. And, of course, the pizza, she was in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. I mean, it's this, it's just not the same. I guess. So <laughs> she called me Johnny Boy. She said, Johnny Boy, they got pizza down there? <laughs> so I said, yeah, Grandma, they got pizza. She uh -huh. says, what is it, like Vinny's? No, no. Is it like <laughs> Anthony's? No, 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 no. Said, well, what's the pizza? I said, Hungry Howie's. She would, she didn't like that. <laughs> but pizza's come a long way here now. We have some pretty good pizza. We hey, well, what's the best you've had, though? I mean, just period, though. You mean here or? or uh, New York. 
Well, there was a place I was teaching at this mu music studio, the first one I told you, and there was this little mom and pop pizza place. Uh -huh. And he did the thick Sicilian pizza uh -huh. and the round, thin pizza. Uh -huh. And it was to die for. You know, so if I had a break, a cancellation or a dinner break, that's right. where we were. So, but I, I just think that the New York style pizza, the the round thin pizza, you know, it would right. be hot, it would burn the roof of right. your mouth, right. <laughs> the, the mozzarella would be leaking off the sides. You know, so it's, yeah, yeah. it's a, a, a little different than uh, yeah. uh, Little Caesars, let's put it that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, what's your favorite here? What's your favorite here? If you have uh, there's, a, there's a place called Italian Pie that's not too far from us, and they're very good. Uh -huh. um, B buys up mm -hmm. the corner makes uh, uh, they're up on Sugarloaf Parkway. They make a good pizza, but mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. good food's good food. I That's think exactly too. Right. And and exactly. and I think what's happened here, we're becoming more and more cosmopolitan in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. The food's better uh -huh. because we have a, a good cross section of people. Uh -huh. When I first came here, it was mostly people that had been here all their lives, and and pizza wasn't. A big part of of their lives, and the food was the southern cuisine, which is great. Right? You know, what's right. better than fried chicken? Right. So, uh, you know, I think we've just gotten better. There's some great restaurants in Atlanta. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what's your favorite food of all time? If you had, if you had to say, oh, favorite Italian time. food. Oh, there, you there know, you go. Any, I, I believe it or not, <laughs> JC, spaghetti yeah. and meatball. <laughs> there you, you go. Know, I, I'm a peasant. <laughs> you know, I can't eat it. No, <laughs> I, I, I remember we my. Uh, Years ago, we went to uh, a restaurant in uh, Miami. My wife was working for Hilton, uh -huh. and uh, we got a free vacation in the Phantom Blue in, uh, in Miami. Mm -hmm. Now, it was myself, my wife, and my daughter. Mm -hmm. So you know who had to say for, <laughs> for four days. <laughs> so finally, they said, this is your night. Where do you want to go to? So I said, uh -huh. I just want to go to a really good Italian restaurant. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so we this guy recommended this place, uh -huh. and uh, so they asked my daughter had uh, ravioli. My wife had uh, some fancy dish. So they asked me what I said. I just want something with a good red sauce, some pasta. So, sure, yeah. And it was great. So uh -huh. afterwards, uh, I said, What part of Brooklyn is your chef from? So they said Havana, <laughs> and it was it was it was one of the best Italian restaurants I was ever ever went to. And the guy was from he was Cuban, he was uh -huh. from Havana, but it was it was great. I like it, I like <laughs> it, I like it, I dig it, I totally dig it. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I, I love well, I love me some Chinese food, but oh yeah, uh, we know. like Chinese. As a oh, yeah. matter of fact, again, the the Chinese food has gotten better and better uh, in this area than when we first came down. And Chinese food is very big in New York. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. my father was brought up in Little Italy, mm -hmm. and right next to Little Italy is Chinatown. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when yeah. Uh, he was on Mulberry Street, uh -huh. and Chinatown started on Mud Street, or I forget exactly where. Uh -huh. So when I was a kid, uh, lunch, we would either, either have Italian or we would have uh, Chinese food. Yes. I love it. I, I love, love it. Chinese food. Oh, too. yeah. I love I it. I love just about anything. I hear you. Yes. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, tell everyone, I mean, what do, you, what do you, other than the drums, of course, but what, I mean, tell everyone what you just like to do in your spare time. You know what I mean? Well, uh, we, we went to the theater. My wife and I uh, had a theater thing going uh, at the Aurora in uh, Lawrenceville, which we're going to go back to now that the pandemic is, I don't want to say it's over, but it's it's close to being over. Mm -hmm. So we do that. I'm very, very big baseball fan. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I watch the, the Yankees on my team and the, the Braves on my second team. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was a kid, um, I was a pretty good baseball player. I was like one of the best players on the team. Then when I got to high school, I was just one of the guys on the team. And then I decided, well, I thought I was going to be pitching in Yankee Stadium. And uh, the only thing I pitched in Yankee Stadium was I pitched the guy for peanuts to bring him <laughs> to me when I was there. But, uh, but uh, so I'm very, very big baseball fan. I like uh -huh. to work outdoors. Uh-huh. Uh, I enjoy, um, you know, just trimming the shrubs and planting some flowers and uh, mm -hmm. and the like there. So, mm -hmm. and of course, I just en enjoy being with my family. They're they're sure. in different parts of the country right now. I got with you. the way things mm -hmm. are. But mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but my brother, 
And my two sisters and my mother mm -hmm. live over here. So my mother's 92. God bless her. I'm taking her, her out well, to lunch tomorrow. I so, love it. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so family's really, really important. And I we, love that. We yeah. enjoy the holidays a, mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, uh, I, I'm, I think I'm a people person. I just like to be around people. I go to Kroger and I talk to the little kids and I'm, the parents look at me like I'm crazy. But I, I enjoy little kids. I, uh -huh. I really... Yeah. Oh, well, you're a good influence. Really I, I enjoyed... Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was out of the classroom and I was the parent coordinator, I would see that the kids from kindergarten up through fifth grade. So it was nice. The kindergarten kids didn't understand the joke. So you could, <laughs> I, I could tell them over and over again and it still wouldn't work. And the kindergarten teachers used to tell them, stay away from him. So, but uh, <laughs> but I, I enjoy uh, being, uh, being around people. You yeah. know? So, uh, and I have spent my life doing things that, you know, go to church on Sunday, do the, sure, yeah. do the things that yeah. you think you're supposed to be doing. Sure, yeah. And, and, and I think it's important to be nice to people, too. Uh, I love that. Amen. You know, no, you know yeah, I, yeah. I, and, and I think I, uh, I, I get along with ju just about everyone. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, I, mm -hmm. and, and those that I don't care for, I just stay away from. You know what that's I mean? That's it. So, yeah, that's so, it. Uh, that's exactly right. No, you, you got it, man. Well, yeah, I completely I, I agree. Uh, well, you mentioned the Braves and stuff. Mm -hmm. I met Chip, I, I, Chipper Jones, man. I, I had a secondary job a couple months ago. But I met him. Really? I, I shook his hand. Yeah. Cool. He was standing right there. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, Did you like, talk to him? Wait. Uh, yeah, it was, I, I actually didn't recognize him at first, but yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, and then it was someone else said, hey, that's Chip Jones right there. Like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, oh, it is, you're right. <laughs> but I shook his hand and everything got his autograph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. So, of cool. course, you remember Chip Jones, of course. Yes, yeah. Yeah. well, you know, uh, about in 2013, mm -hmm. I called in the radio station, answered a question, uh -huh. and I was put in a pool of people that answered this question mm -hmm. and six of us would be invited to a Braves game and I was one of the six and then when we were there one of the six uh, they had a way of picking out something out of a, a shopping bag it was a, a jersey uh -huh. I won it and the Braves gave me a free trip to St. Louis so I oh, did the weekend in yeah. St. Louis oh look at that and yeah. what was cool we stayed at the same hotel and I met some of the players and uh -huh. so on and I met John Smoltz. No, there you go. We were talking yeah. baseball, and uh -huh. I didn't want a picture with him. I didn't want an autograph. I just wanted to talk baseball. He I was, got you. He I was so you. cool, and he's on uh -huh. the MLB Network. So nice. And the Braves, I think, through the years, they've had a very good reputation of being very approachable. Right. I got you. And uh, got you. and the lady actually that was in charge of the of this whole program, mm -hmm. uh, when the Braves had a change in. Uh, top management, they started over again. So she's in San Diego now, and she said when we go out there, which since we go to Los Angeles, she would get us tickets to go to the San Diego game. So one of my things is to go to as many different baseball stadiums as I, I can, too. So I love it. So we want to, uh, uh, last summer we were thwarted with uh, the pandemic, so maybe yeah. I want to go to Wrigley Field and a few of the places that I haven't been to, too. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Well, tell everyone about your well, your your children. Your, your, they're not children, but yeah, yeah. Well, I have four kids. Uh -huh. uh, my oldest is uh, was a drummer. As a matter of fact, those trophies there are his. He uh -huh. won in band competitions in uh, uh, when he was in high school, uh -huh. and he could probably be a full time drummer if he wanted. He's a very good player, but he is he's got his own business. He edits and produces in Los Angeles. My second son is in the Dayton Philharmonic. He he w he taught over here too, but he went to he calls it legit playing. So he's more <laughs> of a classical player. I got you. But he can play drum set very well too. Uh, he's got uh, tremendous hands. I got you. And he's in Ohio with the Dayton Philharmonic. Love it. And then my third son is also an editor. He went out to Los Angeles, and my my son gave him his first job. My other son, mm -hmm. they actually worked for. Um, 
I'll think of his name in a minute. Uh -huh. uh, but at any rate, it was a Nickelodeon show. Oh, uh, okay. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. Oh, wow. They yeah. worked for Nick Cannon. And wow. And they yeah. each progressed. So now he is an editor for the James Corden show. Whoa, yeah. And he big, won big. an Emmy for the skit that they did with Paul McCartney. They wow. Did McCartney. Yeah, that's huge. So yeah. he's doing that. That's and then awesome. My daughter went to USC and she is she works on branding she had, was thinking of going into film but her husband is an editor too and he uh has been on various tv shows he just finished uh, doing a show called prodigal son which was canceled but mm -hmm. he's done many many shows he did uh lethal weapon i think that wow. was on for for four years so he's an editor and and doing that too so wow. and my wife uh loves music she played uh -huh. piano for many years she uh -huh. she stopped playing uh now but we've been married for 51 years wow man 25 wow. of them happily by the way yeah <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, just, that's just a joke, just a joke. <laughs> which 25 <of> <laughs> <laughs> no we've been married for 51 years we wow we, God bless you. we think alike which is not always a good thing but at any rate uh <laughs> seems like uh, that that's uh, a normal thing that that uh happens in in that way and um uh, so uh, I've had a very good life. I'm very oh, lucky. It. As a matter of fact, I just I I used to say uh, about Lou Gehrig. They did Lou Gehrig Day. I think it was yesterday mm -hmm. in uh, MLB, mm -hmm. and he always used to say, uh, "Today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth." So oh, yeah. I've had a pretty good life. I uh, really have. I've worked hard, but you're yeah. supposed to work hard. You That's know it. what I mean? Yeah. And not everything's been perfect, but yeah. it's not supposed to be perfect. Right. You're supposed to right. take care of things. So right, uh, right. Uh, working with kids like you, I guess you're not a kid anymore, but <laughs> uh, but it's it's been very rewarding to yeah, yeah. To, to to do something for other people. Mm -hmm. I think I think uh, that's it's it's more important that we do for other people than do for ourselves. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And when mm -hmm. we do for other people, we are doing for ourselves yeah. because yeah. we're making things better that's sure all. so uh, i mean I, that, like know. to me the golden rule that's what it's all yeah. about do one to others is you that's most good. definitely yeah you know most I mean? definitely yeah. i you know i've <laughs> yeah. i've had as i said i've had very few battles with people so mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. um you know we uh, i i like to get along with people i don't mm -hmm. look to agitate them right so exactly. some people uh make a living agitating <laughs> exactly <laughs> you got that right unfortunately but yeah you're right you're right you're right well, uh, I, I, well, guys, this is John Lamantino. I call him Mr. Lamantino because he was my teacher. But, uh, I mean, would, would you want to jam it up? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, Let's here. play a little bit. All right.
Yes. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the Henry Kern Show would like to thank our friends. Cruise Effects. Slip Trick Records. Pick World Guitar Picks. And of course, Nebulous Music Studios in Royston, Georgia.